question. Um, this is a growing field, so I encourage you to actively, actively participate in the discussion, the discussion whether it's with them, whether it's with me, because we're still trying to shape how it is that we think about big data. Here's also a list of tools, platforms. Some of them, like I said, Recorded Future offers something that's pretty affordable, Palantir Technologies, with a, which a very good friend of mine um, started. I'm not telling you that to send in business, but <laughs> um, it's a really, really kick butt technology, and I think we'll start to see why, even if you go to their uh, marketing. Um, 33 Cross, which we're working with, really amazing um, tools and vendors. So, what you all can wait. So what you'll need for yourself in order to predict your own future and your own happiness, okay? Here are just some data sources, technologies, books to think about, right? The most important thing at the end of this is to understand how you work. How do you value the rewards that you give yourself, okay? Then you need monitoring software or data entry for the queue. How do you know what you're doing, right? So you might have to do a plus, uh, you might take pictures of the food you're eating, then you need software to help you crunch it. The software is what has the models in it to basically say, oh, there seems to be a relationship to when you don't sleep, you tend to eat more. A company called Tick, Tick Track uh, by a gentleman named Mark, Martin Binder is actually trying to do just that. He's coming out of beta very soon. I highly recommend you guys sign up and play with it, check it out. Okay, visualization is key, even for you. Even if you understand the story, the pretty graph will help you codify than yourself. And then iterate. Take what you learn, rinse and repeat. For the analytical department in the creative environment, and the reason I say this is one, I come from a creative environment, but two, you don't have to be at a data warehouse to apply some of these in your marketing department, okay? The first thing is hire a team of business analysts and economic analysts. You don't necessarily need a whole team, but you need to take, talk to people who think in models and they, including you, need to have a role of of those model makers. And model makers just are not just technologists or economists. They're actually anthropologists, editors, authors, people who are telling us how to see the world, okay? Open data you'll need access to. Obviously, use any data set that you have too, but you have all these open data sets, which uh, was in a previous slide, use it. Uh, you have tools, recorded future, palantir. Visualize again to make the case. This time, is it to your senior manager? Is it to your client? It's really important to do that. The other two steps is the development environment at your desktop. So even if it's not you crunching the data, that person will need to have a place to work. And I think at the very end, the creative team to prototype. At the end of the day, when you're trying to predict the future, you have to convince people why they should listen to your prediction. And oftentimes, that's explaining why you come to the outcome you come to. Come to. And creative teams are really great at telling that story for you. OK, and predictions about data. So there will be a time, as you see Google is allowing you to opt out of giving your data. Your data will become yours to basically buy, sell, and trade. Okay? Um, you will own it. I very much believe that that's going to happen. The other thing that's going to continue is this debate on open and closed data. All of us who can participate in that debate, and actually highly uh, suggest you do, I suggest you move towards open data, right? So that's really scary because that's, you might have privacy concerns about that, but ultimately at the end of the day, the more we know about ourselves and share it, the more likely we're going to understand ourselves better, right? So, um, so food for thought on that one. Another thing is an exchange for models, right? So that doesn't mean that everyone should become an economist or a statistician. Um, there are a lot of predictions that that is the sexy career of, a, of this decade, just like being an engineer was in the 90s and the, and the aughts. But I maintain that we still need people who are anthropologists, psychologists, teachers, artists, um, novelists, who are going to be painting these, these images for us, or excuse me, these mental models for us. The industries that we're going to see transform very quickly are real estate. It's really hard for us to understand the true value of real estate, um, the demand, the supply side of it, the actual pricing of it, the value of it. Big data is going to help us codify that. Manufacturing, as everything starts to be tagged with RSI e tags, we're going to have a huge explosion of data, right? It can make things more easy for us, more convenient for us, um, and make a supply chain stream uh, seamless. 
and then of course with government. So I leave you with the one leave you with one last thought from Ali Ki at LL Computers. The best way to predict the future despite prediction markets, models, neural networks is actually to help invent it. And six minutes left for questions. So thank you so much for staying here.